Hi, this is Rana Saira of Cairo with another message from the womb. This time around I'm reporting from paradise, but more specifically from home. This is a new, <laughs> new message for me, but also a new phase in my life. So it's a very special message for the theme in question, but also for personal reasons. And the theme is what I called the tale of the dragon or the sacred, not secret, sacred lineage of Egyptian dance. You will find this concept on my first book, The Secrets of Egypt Dance Life and Beyond. I mention it there, the tale of the dragon. Now, what is the tale of the dragon? Well, this is a name I found to illustrate the feeling I had when I first went to Egypt to study, before I moved and performed there. When I started to see the last glimpses of an era, the last moments of a magic that was soon coming to an end. We cannot stop the world from evolving. Everything is changing all the time, that's for sure. But what made Egyptian dance magical? What made it strike me from a deep, deep emotional, spiritual level was something that I witnessed on my first visits to the country. And suddenly I felt that with the newest generations, the generations that are my generation, that magic was getting lost. You know, Egyptian society is changing like every society in our world. Um, the time to live is different. Um, the feeling is different. The sensibilities are different. The influences from the exterior, from the West, are different. So necessarily, Oriental dance, which is at the core of Egyptian identity, like it or not, um, will change. The thing is, those last glimpses of magic, which I call the tale of the dragon, define, in my opinion, what is Egyptian dance. So nowadays we see trends and fashions and all sorts of things, and I don't think that's necessarily bad. Okay, in every field you have the very bad, you have the average, and you have the great. In every field you have the sublime, and you have the, the poorest form. And I think there is a place for everything, yeah? Even for mistakes, even for ignorance. The, nothing is ex actually wrong. It's not wrong. It's just not Egyptian dance. So nowadays you see uh, Russian trend, Ukrainian trend, Argentinian trend, you know, all sorts of sub-styles, sub as if Egyptian dance could have any other style, if not the Egyptian style. I mean, you know, it's like saying uh, that there is a French style of flamenco, or there is an English style of Irish dance, or there is a Chinese style of Japanese dance. It's just absurd. Japanese dance is Japanese. Chinese dance is Chinese. So Egyptian dance is Egyptian. If you want to practice it, instead of appropriating it with complete disregard for the language and the culture beneath it, yeah, try to learn it. Try to, to, to get something from it, you know, to learn from it and try to respect it as much as possible. So the tale of the dragon has much to do with a motor, a starting point for the movement, which comes from the soul. And I know this is contrary to what most dancers have been taught, including me, because in the West, at least, we move from a physical realm. Movement for us, even dance, starts in the body. Artists in every area know that dance is not just a physical activity, it's an emotional, mental, spiritual activity. But for Egyptian dance, that connection, that completude, that oneness is even more important. And for Egyptian dance in particular, the one for which that connection between bo body, mind, heart and soul is more important, for this dance specifically, 
what I see around the world and in Egypt as well is a, an amnesia of this connection. It's a, a bunch of gimmicks and isolations and um, movements that are supposed to impress and to show how much you know. Um, but I don't see the magic that struck me so deep and that made me fall in love the first times I started to to study in Egypt, yeah, the, my, on my first trips to Egypt, that magic, that soulful quality, yeah, of a body which is totally commanded by the soul, yeah, an ego that has disappeared because it's not about me, it's about the dance, it's about serving the music, it's about something bigger than me, I'm just a vehicle, yeah, I'm a vehicle for something bigger than me, for this soul, which is mine, but it's also part of the soul of everybody. So it's something that connects us. It's so big, it's so much bigger than my vanity, than my ego, than my um, understandable need to, to please and to be appreciated. All of us want to be appreciated. That's not news and it's not strange. But for Egyptian dance, in its original magical quality, we really, really need to access a higher part of ourselves and to dance through it and from it and towards it. That's the tale of the dragon. Now the full dragon is inside of us, inside each one of us. The full dragon is doing it from our souls, from our heart, all the time not once in a while not in some years that i caught in egypt those last years before the thing changed and vanished completely before a new generation my generation of dancers came and were prone to other influences and forgot i think somehow uh, the core of their own dance yeah so if you want to do it from an egyptian perspective if you want to do it from an oriental, rock, sharky, royal art form, you do have to change the way you see dance. It is not a purely physical thing that you do to prove that you can, that you do to receive applause or to impress. It is a language of the soul, coming from the soul. It's a language that involves my body, my heart, my mind, my spirit. It's all or nothing, baby. All or nothing. So if you want to stay in the surface, stay in the surface, have fun. But if you want to go for the real thing, then catch that dragon. Catch it. Catch it by the tail. will be worth